I'm on board the Norwegian Jade, uh, a cruise ship in the Adriatic. This is the second time only since I left the Merchant Navy in 1983 that I have been on board a ship. Uh, and it, 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 it's a great experience being on a ship at sea again, it, even though I am a passenger now and not working on the vessel. And this, and this one particular uh, voyage, uh, we had anchored off a mile or two right, from the vessel, from the head of the uh, inlet, and dropped a lifeboat, and a bunch of us got in the lifeboat. But I would guess we were a couple of hundred yards off the face of this glacier, which is about 200 feet from the waterline to the top. As we're going past, I see a column of ice which looks to be leaning a little bit off the face of the glacier. And I said to this gal, Judy Mullins, she was a hairdresser on the ship, she was standing in front of me and I said, Judy, if that falls now, it'll fall right on top of us. We had to crane our neck like this to see the top of the glacier we were that close. And sure enough, a minute or two later, we'd no sooner gone by than we heard the ice start to fall. And when ice is falling, they call it carving, you know, like when cows have calves, it's called carving. And you know that uh, uh, ice is going to carve when you hear cracks, a series of cracks like pistol shots. That's a warning. And then when the ice actually starts to fall, breaks away from the, from the face of the glacier, this massive great boom, like a cannon going off. So we heard the pistol shots, right? A moment or two later, it, we heard the boom and it starts to go on and it comes down like a tree being felled, crash. The ice hits the water. Mm. And of course it makes a big splash. But a bigger splash came when the hole it created in the water filled up in a great plume of water like this. The staff captain, a fellow called Alan Bunnell, was driving the boat at the time. And he said, right chaps, have we all got our photographs? Right? And we said yes, and so he put the throttles forward uh, to make the boat go faster. Well, these little lifeboats would go putt, 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 putt. You know, we don't break out the water skis with these things. Um, and as he turned and put the throttle forward, instead of going putt, 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 it went putt, 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 just like that. A tidal wave, a little tsunami was created when, uh, when this ice fell. And from the distance, from two miles off on, on the bridge of the ship, they see this tiny little dot, which is us, and this great big tidal wave, which is following us. And we're trying to outrun it in this little putt-putt boat. We could see it coming, of course, but we had no real sense of, the, of, of, of any danger. Now, uh, on the ship, there's a, a, a park ranger who acts as the pilot. So he was on the bridge, we are told later, and he was running up and down and tearing his hair, oh my God, they're gonna be killed. And so we have no sense of this. We saw, the, we saw the tidal wave coming, and we're trying to outrun it. And by the time it caught up to us, a lot of its energy had been spent and we just kind of bobbed over the top of it like a cork in the water, you know. We got back to the ship and we were, I mean, this was truly to be that close to that much ice falling. It, it was quite, quite a thrilling, a thrilling experience. And we got back to the ship and they were, and they were saying, oh my God, we were, we were you know, scared. And we wanted to talk. We had no real sense of being in any danger. Were we in danger being that close to that much ice? Had we left it, you know, had it fallen, t you know, two minutes earlier, who knows? <laughs> I might not be sitting here telling you about it, right? Um, but we did, we, uh, you know, we survived the experience and uh, that was my uh, close encounter with, a, with an iceberg.